So good morning once again all remote centers. In the last thing that we have discussed is about the carrier concentration and about the doping particularly how to increase the electron concentration and hole concentration and that is by doping. The doping level normally increases from let us say lower side tends for 13 it goes to about tends for 18, 19 and how much to dope is actually determined by the function that we want from our semiconductor to. One very important parameter in operation of any device is the temperature. Okay. One very important function of a parameter in operation of any device is the temperature. So, let me go back and tell you something about what we discuss when you are talking about intrinsic material. Okay, we are talking about intrinsic material. What did we discuss? That because of the temperature at room temperature, okay, at room temperature, because of the thermal energy of the room temperature, some of the electron will actually get an energy and go and it will create a electron hole pair, some other electron will go and create an electron hole pair. Okay. We create an electron hole pair and the number is at room temperature, we call N i equal to P i equal to tens for 10 per centimeter cube. Okay. That is what we know. Fine. This we are talking about at room temperature, right. Now, what will happen if your temperature increases? What will happen if your temperature increases? Okay. So, fine, if you increase the temperature, more and more electrons will get enough energy to go. Okay. So, there will be more electron, more hole, more electron, more hole. And this, this process is happening because of what? This process is happening because of the temperature. Okay. Light has not come into picture. We are still only talking about temperatures. As a result, when you increase the temperature, what will happen? This N i equal to P i equal to tens for 10 per centimeter cube is at room temperature. So, if the temperature is higher, what do you expect? N i is N i to also increase. You also expect P i to increase. When temperature is higher, you want, you expect that N i will also increase, P i will also increase because more and more electrons get enough energy to get excited and go to the conduction band. Okay. But in what way it affects the performance of solar cell? And many people were asking that what happens to the efficiency of the solar cell when you increase the temperature? And the answer is that efficiency of the solar cell decreases because of the increase in temperature and that happens because of exactly because of this reason. Because of increase in temperature, your intrinsic carrier concentration that is electron and hole concentration increases and that result in decrease in efficiency. How? We will see later. Okay. But the main culprit of decrease in efficiency is this. The main culprit for decrease in efficiency of solar cell due to increase in the temperature is increase in this. And why it increases? Because the more temperature, more, more energy is available for electron so that they can actually increase the number. Okay. And this is the graph that shows that look at the silicon N i. Okay, this axis is N i actually intrinsic carrier concentration per centimeter cube. When you go from low temperature, this side right hand side, the right most side is the low temperature and this is high temperature. When you increase your temperature, you can see the intrinsic carrier concentration increases and at some point it can become as good as what is the tens for 14, 15 doping level. Okay. And some point it becomes as good as your doping level and that is where the problem starts. Okay. In reality, the doping, uh, the at room temperature, the concentration for uh, intrinsic carrier in silicon is tens for 10, 1.5 times tens for 10. Uh, as we discussed, germanium has a lower band gap and therefore, it will have higher concentration. Gallium arsenide has a higher band gap, higher band gap means more energy is required, therefore, the concentration of electron is and holes in the room temperature because of the thermal excitation is lower. One other important thing to understand is when you are doing the doping of your semiconductor and when you are making it p type, is the semiconductor become positively charged? That is the question. Or when you are doping your semiconductor by phosphorus and when you are making it n type, is the semiconductor becomes negatively charged? Positively charged means p type doping. Uh, uh, if there is a p type doping, you touch the semiconductor, if it is positive, you will get a shock. Will that happen? Or if it is an n type semiconductor, you touch it, you will get a shock. Will that happen? Answer is no, it will not happen. Why it will not happen? So, why it not happens? It, it says that 
there is a always phase charge neutrality and compensation. Okay. What does it mean? It means that if here, so because of this, if you are getting a electron here, extra electron because of the hole, uh, sorry because of the phosphorus, you are getting extra electron because it had 5 electron and you wanted only 4 electron to share. Okay. So, it gave extra electron, it donated extra electron. So, with this electron it becomes free, when electron leaves the atom, the phosphorus becomes positively charged. Okay. So, it will become positively charged. So, as a result you will create one positive charge here and there is corresponding negative charge here. Okay. So, the what is the net effect? Net charge in the semiconductor is 0. Okay. That is called the charge neutrality. Okay. So, the charge neutrality is maintained. Okay. So, by doping of the semiconductor, it does not become positive charge or negative charge, it remains neutral and this neutrality can be explained here. Okay. N 0 is the charge on electron number of electrons and the all negatively charged and A is acceptor. Okay. So, one hole like boron atom can accept electron and after accepting it becomes a negatively charged. Okay. So, the net negative charge is equal to the net positive charge and this P 0 is a hole concentration and N D is a donor atom. So, after donating a electron it becomes positively charged. So, after giving away electron it becomes positive. Okay. So, in a semiconductor net positive charge is always equal to net negative charge, it is called the space charge neutrality is always maintained. So, whenever you do the doping, your semiconductor does not become either positive or negative charge. So, so far we have learned about how the carriers are generated in semiconductor. Okay. So, one way to increase, uh, one way to get electron hole pair is doping. Okay. So, you can put boron, phosphorus and you can bore electron and hole. What is the other way you can increase the electron and hole pair? we already discussed. What is the other way in which increase the electron concentration and hole concentration? Thermal energy, right. You put more temperature, your electron generation is more. So, there are two ways we already learned in which electron and hole can be generated or can be increased or decreased in a semiconductor. There is one more important way that is that comes in picture that is because of the light falling on your solar cell that will come later when we discuss the solar cell operation. Okay. Right now, we are just discussing a plane semiconductor. Okay, so, in the last lecture, the job was to find out how many carriers are there, okay, how many electrons are there, how many holes are there, how we change them. In this lecture, we will find out how these carriers move, okay, how they go from one place in semiconductor to other place, how they go from one place in semiconductor to other place, because the whole operation of a device is motion of carriers. right? When your BJT works, when your transistor works, when your diode works or when your solar cell works, what happens inside? the carriers move from one place to other place. So, we should understand how these carriers are moving from one place to other place and corresponding to the moment and the moment of carriers is what? What is the moment of charge carrier? The moment of charge carrier is current. Okay. So, once we know how the carriers move, we should try to define corresponding current. That is what we should do in this lecture. So, in the last lecture, we have seen charge carriers, their numbers and their distribution in energy levels. That is what we have seen in the last lecture. In this lecture, we will see how the carriers move, motion of carriers. Very simple, there are only two ways carriers can move. They can move by the drift motion and they can move by diffusion. Okay. Two important thing and then we will uh, we'll quickly see. Okay. But remember, there are two ways carriers can move in a semiconductor. Drift of the carriers, which happens because of the electric field. Diffusion of the carriers, which happens because of the concentration difference in the carriers. Okay. Let us look at it. In a semiconductor, when there is no electric field apply E equal to 0, by the way, I am sorry, this, this symbol E is not the E potential energy that we draw, right. When you draw the energy band diagram, or let me clarify this here. So, this symbol E is actually this E I am talking about, okay, this zeta. Let me clarify here. So, uh, when we draw this energy band diagram, this is the energy level and here we say E okay, and this is a distance x. This energy level he here, what is this? It is a potential energy we are drawing. Now, I am going to use another symbol called zeta and this is the electric field. Okay. So, do not get confused between the two. I am going to draw electric field. Okay. So, this is here is the potential energy and the motion of carrier, when we discuss the motion of carrier, we talk about the electric field. Okay. Coming back here, 
So, when so sorry this is not E, this is zeta here. So, please correct it E zeta equal to 0. So, when electric field is 0, what will happen to the electron in a semiconductor? Will it be sitting nicely at one place like you at your chair or it will be moving? The answer is even when there is electric field is 0 in semiconductor because semiconductor is not at 0 Kelvin, okay. it is at some temperature and that temperature is good enough to provide you provide the electron some energy and with that energy electron can move. But because the guidance to the electron is 0, there is no guidance, where it will move it will go in all direction, it will go randomly in all direction and if you watch that electron after some time the net motion of the electron will be 0. Okay. So, in the absence of electric field the net motion is 0, but look at here when electric field is non-zero it is positive. What will happen? Electron will start at motion here, it will still have some random direction. So, this change of the direction is basically what is the electron is moving in where? It is moving in all the atoms. Okay. So, it will actually have the collision, it will go in the other direction, then it will go in the other direction, that will change the direction, but because there is electric field there is net motion. Okay. The electron will actually grow from here to here, because the electric field is in this direction. Okay. By the way, the force on electron, the, the force on electron is given by minus q times zeta electric field and the charge of electron. Okay. The minus represent the opposite direction. Okay. So, if this is the direction of electric field, this will be the direction of force. Okay. The force applied on electron due to the electric field is in the opposite direction. Okay. Keep that in mind. So, therefore, when force is in this direction right to left, the electron is moving from left to right. Okay. This motion of electron in electric field is called the drift motion, drift motion. Okay. What is the velocity of this electron? Now, we will say electron is going in this direction and then it goes in this direction, then it goes here, 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 here. So, electron is moving in one direction, but still it is random. So, we cannot talk about the velocity as such, we can talk only about the average velocity. Okay. We will talk about the average velocity and this average velocity is called the drift velocity of electron. Okay. This average velocity of the electron under electric field is called drift velocity. Similarly, hole is also positive charge and because it is a charge, it will also experience a electric field. Okay. So, this is for electron, what will happen for the hole? The force on hole is plus q zeta plus q charge okay, because of the positive and if this is my direction of electric field, this is my direction of force. Okay. So, the motion of electron is oppos in the opposite direction of electric field, the motion of the hole is in the same direction as that of electric field. Very important to understand, it will be useful. Okay. The motion of electron is in the opposite direction to that of electric field, because the force is opposite. The motion of hole, motion of hole is in the same direction as that of electric field. Okay, the thing here is that the electron moves with the velocity, average velocity called the drift velocity under electric field. Okay. Which means, once you apply electric field, electron is moving with the net velocity. When the electron is moving with the net velocity, there is a charge transfer taking place. Okay. The charge flow taking place and the flow of charge is what? Rate flow of charge is current. Okay, the net flow of charge is current. So, once we know the electrons are moving, we can actually find out the current. Right? How we will find out the current? You can actually, you can do this. Okay? The current is, is given by this expression here. So, this is the drift velocity expression. Do not, we will not go into the details of that, but basically the drift velocity is a function of electric field. Okay, let me go back here. The velocity attained by electron will depend on what? It will depend on the electric field. If electric field is very strong, the velocity will be higher. Okay. Very important thing here is the velocity attained by electron will also depend by the structure of the material. Right? If your structure is very defected, amorphous material. Okay? So, if it is very defected, means there are a lot of hindrances that will occur in the path and because lot of hindrances, the velocity that will gain is 0. But if your material is smooth, smooth means monocrystalline, very well ordered material. If your material is very smooth, the electron will flow with a faster velocity. Okay? It will attain higher velocity. So, the velocity, the drift velocity will depend on the electric field and it will also depend on the 
structure of the material and we will know how to quantify that. But before coming here, if you have the carriers, if you are carriers which are moving, if you have the carriers electrons, let us say I am talking about electrons. If you have the electrons which are having n in the number, what is n? n is the density, number of electrons per centimeter cube. n is the number, okay? and if they are moving and each n is the number and if I multiply with the q, what I get? The charge density, charge per unit volume. Okay? So, n is, is the number per centimeter cube and q is charge okay fine or coulomb if i multiply n q with the drift velocity the velocity which which they are moving velocity with which you are moving okay what is unit of velocity centimeter per second okay so what is the unit of n q and v d unit of n q and v d is that the unit of n q v d is that is the so, this centimeter will get cancelled with the 3. So, now you will have 2. Okay, so, you have coulomb per second and per centimeter square. Coulomb per second per centimeter. What is coulomb per second? Current, okay, charge flow, rate of flow of charge. So, coulomb per second is current and current per unit area, right. So, here it is area, right. So, n k d is nothing but j. Okay, that is your current density. It is nothing, the expression is coulomb per second is ampere. So, you have the expression in ampere per centimeter square or j is the current density. right? So, if you know the carrier concentration electron, if you know their charge and if you know the velocity with which they are moving, so you will find out this product will give you the, the coulomb, the total coulomb that is moving per unit area and that is nothing but your per unit area per unit time by the way. Okay, rate of flow of charge per unit area per unit time. So, that will actually give the current density. Is it very clear? So, that is current density. If I want to find the current, then I should multiply with the area. So, my current is nothing but j into a. Okay. We will use the symbol throughout. The j represents current density per unit area. I represents the current. If I multiply with the cross section area of my semiconductor, I get the current. This is the current density due to the electrons. right? Now, in my semiconductor, there are electrons and there are also holes. So, holes will also move, right? holes will also move. So, can I write? So, this is, let me write, this is the current density of electron. I will write a subscript A, N. Can I write expression for the J p or let you people write the expression for the J p? Okay? Let us say, uh, the drift velocity of hole is V d. Okay? Drift velocity of hole is V d write the expression for the drift current density due to the holes. Same thing will exactly do similar. N is electron concentration, let us say P is hole concentration, Q is the charge of electron and the charge of electron and hole is equal. So, I will have the Q also and the drift velocity. That is it. This is the expression and I am talking about what? I am talking about the drift current. Okay? This is the drift current. Okay. Drift current of electron and drift current of hole. Okay. So, under the electric field, electron will contribute to the current, hole will contribute to the current. What is the total current? Total current will, because in a semiconductor you have electron as well as holes. So, both electron and both hole will contribute to the current. What will be the total current? Total current will be, total drift current will be, okay. so total drift current will be sum of electron plus hole current. Right? Both carriers are contributing and therefore, you will have the expression as this is n q v d plus this is p q v d. Right? So, this is the expression and this is the drift current. Okay? So, I will say j drift is sum of the electron drift and sum of the uh, and the hole drift. Very easy, you can find out that. Right, and this is the current density. By the way, J is current density. If you multiply with the area, if you multiply with the area, so your I will be nothing but A area times n q v d plus p q v d, where v d is the drift velocity. 
Okay. So, this is the expression for the drift current, this is the expression for the drift current. Now, from the drift current we actually find out, so this is what you will get, but we can define a very interesting parameter. Okay. The velocity attained by a carrier is dependent, right. The velocity attained by a carrier is dependent on the, on uncertain parameter. So, how much velocity it attains per unit electric field is called the mobility, right. Remember what I told you that if your material is amorphous, the velocity that your carrier will attain under a same electric field will be lower. Why? Because, because of the amorphous there are lot of defects and there will be a lot of collision that will take place. And because of a lot of collision, the velocity attained will be lower, right. Same thing, if you are asked to run on a plain highway or the plain road, you will run faster. But if you are asked to run on a crowded street, then you will not be able to run faster. Same thing with the happen to the electron. So, when you are talking about a perfectly ordered crystal, you are talking about a highway. Okay? So, for that electron will run faster. When we are talking about a defected material like amorphous silicon, because of the defects, the uh, uh, the, the hindrance in the path of electrons higher and therefore, the drift velocity attained is lower. And therefore, that brings me to a very important parameter called mobility mu. Mobility of a electron will depend on how much is the velocity it is attaining per unit electric field. So, mobility is a very, very important function are very, very important parameter of the material for a solar cell. Okay? A material with good mobility means good, a material with a bad mobility or lower mobility is not good. So, always a scientist all over the world try to achieve highest mobility as much as we can. What is the unit of mobility you can find out? What is the unit of velocity? It is centimeter per second and what is unit of electric field? Old per centimeter. So, old per centimeter. So, unit becomes centimeter square per volt second. The unit of mobility is centimeter square volt per second. You have the uh, mobility of electrons. Similarly, you will have the mu p mobility of holes. Right? Holes will also move and will also have the similar uh, process. So, then your expression can be simpler. So, q n v d instead of v d you can say mu n and zeta electric field. So, your current density due to the electric field is q n mu zeta, your current drift current for the holes is q n mu p zeta okay? and mu is the mobility and uh, very important parameters for the semiconductor, very, very important parameter for the solar cell, okay? very, very important parameter for the solar cell operation. So, coming back to the mobility, we can actually have the drift current density given for the electrons and drift current density given for the holes which are given here, here, right. And this is the number okay? and also the centimeter square per volt second is the mobility. So, if you look at the silicon, the mobility of electrons is higher than the mobility of holes. Mobility of electrons is 1350 and mobility of holes is 480 centimeter square per volt second. In germanium, mobilities are higher. As you go from monocrystalline material to multicrystalline to polycrystalline to amorphous, what will happen to the mobility? I will not answer, talk to your friend. Okay? As you go from monocrystalline to multicrystalline to polycrystalline to amorphous silicon, what will happen to the mobility? Will it decrease or increase? You discuss with your friend among yourself. Okay? So, as you increase your doping, as you increase your doping, your mobility actually decreases, right? Why? Because you are disturbing your lattice too much. You are disturbing, you are putting external impurities, you are putting more boron, more phosphorus. So, you are disturbing your silicon and because you are creating the disturbance, the hindrance, you are creating more for the path of electron in hole and because of that hindrance is created, your mobility is decreases. At higher temperature also, your mobility decreases, right? Because at higher temperature, uh, the, there is a lattice vibration and because of the lattice vibration, there is a more chance that electron moving around will actually collide with the atom and because of the increased probability of the collision, as an increase in temperature, your mobility also decreases. Okay? Uh, mobility can be measured using the, uh, uh, the Hall effect. You can measure the uh, your carrier concentration using the Hall effect. I am not going to discuss here. These are the extra slides for those who want. Uh, so, but using the Hall effect, you can actually uh, check your mobility. Uh, there are Hall effect measurement devices which can help you to check your mobility. Once you know your mobility, you can find out the current, you can find out the doping level also. Okay? So, there are equipments available which can help you. If you give the semiconductor, they will tell okay, this semiconductor is doped with 
10 or 15 electron concentration or 10 or 16 electron concentration or whatever it is or it is a whole concentration or electron everything is possible you can measure that okay now that brings me to the second important mechanism of charge transport and that is the diffusion of carriers so carriers can diffuse uh, uh, so one transport mechanism is electric field so when you have uh, uh, electric field carriers moves and other is the diffusion of the carriers so what is diffusion diffusion is basically a motion of carriers from high concentration level to a low concentration level okay from high concentration level to low concentration level have you ever experienced such motion of the particles an answer should be yes you might have done that already because when you let's say the classical example is the perfume okay so when somebody spreads a perfume in one corner of the room immediate the smell of the perfume spreads all over the room and that is the example of how so when when, uh, when the perfume spread in one corner there is a high density of that uh, particles of the perfume in the other corner there is a low density and there is a concentration difference so particles will move from high concentration to low concentration exactly same thing also happens to the electrons and holes in a semiconductor okay by some by any reason if there is a concentration difference at one point as compared to the other point carriers will move okay by some reason if there is a by some reason if i have uh, let's say this is my concentration so number per centimeter cube and this is my x distance if I have two reason of semiconductor where I, let's say this is electron concentration, okay, and so this is the reason where the, you have high concentration, and this is the reason where you have low concentration, okay. What will happen? The electrons will move from high concentration to low concentration, okay. Uh, so what will be the direction of the current? By the electrons are moving means there is a current flowing. Whenever, whenever there is a net flow of charge of either electrons and holes, there is a net flow of current. So, when electrons are moving in this direction, what is the direction of the current flow? The direction of the current flow is always as a convention is opposite direction of the electron. So, this is the electron flow okay, and the direction of the current will be in this. So, this will be a current flow. Okay. Current flow is happening in the opposite direction of the electron flow. And this current flow is happening why? What? Because of what? Not because of the electric field. It is happening because of the concentration difference. Because one region is having higher concentration as compared to the other region, and because of this concentration difference, there will be a current flow. And therefore, this current is called the diffusion current. Okay, this current is called diffusion current. What was the term earlier for the electric field current? Electric field current. The term was the drift current. This current is called the diffusion. Current. Okay, so uh, so diffusion occurs. I mean, I will not explain in the detail why diffusion occurs. It is very clear that the carrier will move from high concentration to the low concentration. So diffusion occurs. Uh, this is the uh, mathematical expression why uh, for the uh, the flow of the electrons due to the concentration gradient. Okay, so this is n x and is the concentration in per centimeter cube. This is the distance when there's a electron. Uh, profile or the concentration changes from high concentration to low concentration, carrier will move. Okay, carrier will move from other side. Uh, and again, I'll not go into the detail, but let me come directly here. So the flux of the electron flow, that is the number of electrons per centimeter square per unit time. Okay, because this is a flux, right? Per unit time is depends on what? It depends on what is the concentration gradient, right? So higher is the concentration gradient, higher will be the flow, right? So if I have two scenario, in one scenario, uh, in one scenario the concentration is changing like this, in other scenario concentration is changing like this. Okay? So here the gradient is higher, right? In this case, dn over dx, that is the concentration gradient, uh, is higher as compared to this case. Okay? Because of the higher slope this is higher as compared to this case and therefore the current will be higher in this case okay whenever the uh, whenever the uh, concentration gradient is higher current will be higher so the flux of the carriers because of the concentration gradient depends on the proportional to the concentration gradient okay and in the electric field when the motion of carriers were described in electric field we talked about the mobility here we are talking about the diffusion coefficient d here we are talking about the diffusion coefficient. So, flux is 
uh, is proportional to the diffusion coefficient and the carrier concentration. Okay, so that is flux, and the the unit of the flux is number per unit area per unit time, number per centimeter square per second. Okay, so that is the flux. What we want to find out, we are not interested in the flux of the electrons or flux of the holes. We are interested in the current due to the electrons and current due to the holes. Okay, so this is number per unit area per unit time. What should I multiply here to get the current? What should I multiply here? What is the current? Charge per unit area per unit time. Current density is the charge per unit area per unit time. So, if I multiply by the Q, then if I multiply by the Q, then I will get the flux. If I multiply Q into the, I am sorry, the current density is Q into the flux. Current density is the Q into the flux. Okay? You will find the same thing here. So, this is the flux of the electrons, and similarly, you can actually draw the flux of the holes, and you can find out the flux of the electrons, flux of the holes and the current density due to the diffusion is Q times d n and the concentration gradient and current density due to the holes is Q times d p and the concentration gradient of holes. Okay? Important thing is why there is a negative sign here, let us understand that. Okay? This is electric field direction, if this is electric field direction, the force on electron is in opposite direction okay, E and the force on hole is in this direction H. What is the current direction? Because electron is in moving in this direction, the current is in the opposite direction of electron flow. Okay. So, the current due to the electron in this direction and hole is moving in this direction, the current is also moving in the same direction. Okay. So, hole current is in the same direction. Okay. Eventually, what is happening? the electron current, direction of the electron current is in the same direction as electric field. Direction of the whole current, direction of the whole current is in the same direction as electric field. Okay? So, both electron current and whole current moves in the same direction as the direction of electric field. Clear? Look at the diffusion current. Okay? So, this was the drift. This is the case for drift and this is very important to us. Let, let's, let us look at the diffusion. And because the uh, because in electric field, the electron current and hole current is the same direction as electric field, in the expression there is no negative sign. Okay? There is no negative sign in the expression. What happens in diffusion? Suppose I have this profile of a n x electron concentration n for electron. If I have this profile of electron what is the direction in which the electrons will move high concentration to low concentration. So, electron will move in this direction movement, here we talked about the force, here we are talking about movement. Okay? So, movement of electron because of this kind of profile is this direction and when the electron is moving this, the current is always opposite. Okay? The current is in this direction. So, this is electron diffusion current. This current is electron diffusion current direction. Okay? Now, d n over d. So, I am uh, which direction d n over d x is positive? If I go from low concentration to high concentration here. So, my d n over d x is positive in this direction. Okay? What, how the d n is final minus initial divided by final minus initial. So, my gradient of a electron concentration is positive in this direction. Okay? So, my positive gradient direction is my elect, my current direction my positive gradient direction is my current direction and therefore, there is a positive sign in the carrier current density. Right? So, electron current there is a positive sign here. Okay? J n diffusion, diffusion current due to the electron is Q d n d n over d x. Here is a negative sign and I will, will understand immediately why. Now, suppose I have a whole profile okay? that is a p x whole concentration profile is like this, because carrier will move from high concentration to low concentration. So, hole will also move in this direction, moment of hole will be in this high to low, go from here to here. right? And because hole, the direction of current for the hole is same as the direction of uh, the hole motion. So, therefore, the whole current is in the same direction. right? Okay, now, what is the direction my gradient d p or d x? my d p or d x is again positive in this direction. 
okay. Gradient is defined as final minus initial, final minus initial. So, my gradient for the whole concentration is positive in the this direction, opposite right to left, but my whole current is moving in the other, other direction, left to right. Okay. This is here and that is, you can see the directions are opposite and because of that direction opposite, you should have the negative sign in the expression and that, that is why you have the diffusion current for the whole as having a negative sign. Got it? Okay, so, for electron there are two components electron drift and electron diffusion for the whole there are two component electron drift and electron diffusion in total 2 plus 2 there are four current component in a semiconductor. How many current component? Four current component electron drift, electron diffusion, whole drift, whole diffusion and the total current is sum of all. Okay, so, this expression here and you have a look at whenever you have time look at in the detail total electron current, total whole current and this is the total current of a semiconductor which will flow under the electric field and under the diffusion or the under the concentration gradient. This is what we explain already, this is already in your slide. The diffusion coefficient is also given, the value of diffusion coefficient you can find out from the expression. Okay. You can work out from this expression, the, uh, the unit of diffusion coefficient is centimeter square per second. Okay. So, let me write here again. So, unit of mobility is centimeter square per old second, unit of diffusion coefficient is centimeter square per second. <coughs> okay. Normally, this two very interesting. Okay. So, d, d is related to the diffusion which is concentration gradient, mu is related to the mobility which is electric field phenomenon. Okay. This is this is coming from the electric field motion. Okay. This is coming from the concentration gradient motion. Right? But a scientist uh, Einstein found that both of them are related. Okay. So, mu by d is actually k t by q. Is that correct? No, opposite, I am sorry. d by mu is equal to k t by q d by mu is equal to k t by q and you can see the units. Okay, d is centimeter square per second and centimeter square per volt second. So, you get cancelled and k t by q has always a unit of volt. k t by q has a unit of volt and only k t has a unit of electron volt. k t by q has a unit of volt and this is a mobility centimeter square per volt second, diffusion coefficient centimeter square per second. Mobility is there for electron and holes diffusion coefficient is there for electron and holes and you have the uh, this expression it is called Einstein relationship k t by q is equal to d by mu or d by mu and this are the value of mobilities are normally higher diffusion coefficient values are lower and you can see yourself k t by q equal to d by mu it works or not. Uh, this is the expression that I was talking about k t by q equal to d by mu again we do not have time to discuss it. So, in summary. Uh, very important thing to understand that there are two current, there are two forces which causes current to flow in a semiconductor, Diffu drift of the carriers which happens because of the electric field, diffusion of carriers which happens because of the concentration gradient. Under the electric field, electron can move, hole can move and both will contribute to the current. So, there is electron drift current and there is a hole drift current. Under the concentration gradient, both electron will move and hole will move and both will contribute to the current. So, there is a hole diffusion current and there is an electron diffusion current and the total current is the sum of all the four cu current component in the semiconductor. So, there are four current component and we have discussed how to write the direction of the electric field and based on the direction how to check the motion of the current and uh, electric field uh, and electron and hole drift current is the same direction as the field electric field. Similarly, we can actually uh, if you know the concentration gradient profile, then we can find out the motion of the electrons and once you know the motion of electron, we can find out the motion of direction of electron current and whole diffusion current also. So, let me take a few questions very quickly. Okay, Gandhinagar. I am Rajesh Tripathi speaking from Gandhinagar. How albedo effect, albedo effect affects the efficiency of PV module? Okay, albedo is a current, uh, it's a component of the solar radiation that comes from the reflection from the ground and surrounding area and because of the reflection 
the efficiency will not get affected ok, because of the reflection basically you are getting more radiation in, and more conversion will take place, but the efficiency will not be dependent on albedo. Sir, in your previous lecture you said that uh, in uh, intrinsic semiconductor uh, they are stable because uh, one silicon is connected with the four silicon, but uh, in extrinsic semiconductor when you are doping then uh, due to this doping sir there will be a instability. So, this instability will not create a problem in doping because the okay, stable okay. condition is disturbed. Yeah, so in the when you when you make an extrinsic semiconductor when you do the doping remember the atomic density of silicon is 10 to the power 22 atoms per centimeter cube ok, 10 to the power 22 and you do the doping of 10 to the power 15, 16, 17 ok. So, still you are making 1 atom into 10 1 billion atom or 1 million atom ok. So, because your doping level is so small it does not affect normally the stability of the material. So, my question is sir, is really it is all allowed the other atom, other atom is allowed in the semiconductor, in pure semiconductor? Yes, 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 you can actually, you can actually force other atom to go into the semiconductor and there is one lecture that I will take about how the silicon is fabricated, ok. So, in that lecture uh, we will discuss in detail how the doping is done in practice. Jaipur College. Go ahead. Sir, my question is, sir, we all know that a semiconductor behaves an insulator at 0 Kelvin and as we increased, as we increase the temperature, the electron acquired the thermal energy and they migrate into the conduction band from valence band. So, my question is, at room temperature, the thermal energy is about 0 0.025 electron volt, whereas the minimum amount of a band gap, say for germanium is about 0 0.6 electron volt. So, I want to know how that can they can cross the that amount of energy which is almost 24 times larger than the band gap. Ok, yes, uh, uh, very good question. Uh, so, question is very nice that you know band gap of a silicon is let us say 1.12 electron volt, the thermal energy is very small ok, it is in the milli electron volt. How it is possible that uh, uh, with a room temperature electron can excite it? The thing is in semiconductor everything is statistical in nature, right. You, you remember when you study the class, the quantum mechanics, uh, even in the classical mechanics, you know, if you take a bottle and if you, you know, take a marble inside the bottle, what is the probability that the marble is outside, available outside the bottle? 0, right. But when you look at the quantum mechanics, you look at the quantum well and you put a particle in the quantum well and if I ask you question, what is the probability that the, the particle is available outside the well and the answer is? it is a non-zero probability, okay. there is some possibility that the, way the electron even it does not have enough energy to come out of the well, it still is available outside. And considering the same, uh, same thing because of the statistical nature out of the trillions and trillions of electrons, some electrons will always have the probability that it gets enough energy and go to the conduction band. Engineering College Pune. Question is. Is it essential to use uh, trivalent or pentavalent impurities in order to doping? Ok, the question is, I will repeat the question is, is it essential to use trivalent or pentavalent impurities for the doping? Answer is yes, uh, because you, you want to create a hole, but it not, it is not necessary that you have only trivalent or pentavalent, you can also have the uh, doping of a bivalent, ok. So, for example, when the doping is done for the uh, let us say uh, 3, 5 metal gallium arsenide. So, where it is very interesting to see how the doping is done, right. So, you can do the doping. So, basically you, you have to somehow create a shortage of electron, ok, or you have to create some of the shortage of the electrons for making the enough number of covalent bonds. So, whenever that shortage is created, you actually can have the, uh, the doping done. So, the, the answer is, uh, it is not necessary that you only have the trivalent or pentavalent to make it p type or n type. There are other ways you can also create the, the doping levels. Karnataka, yeah, go ahead. Sir, instead of having a flat uh, solar PV module, why can't we have dome shaped structure? So, that uh, any one of the PV module will be exposed to direct radiation that is normal to the plane. Uh, so, that you can avoid the solar tracking. So, if I understand your question correctly, instead of a flat module, why cannot we have cylindrical module, right? Ok, so the problem with the spherical module is that yes, uh, you can actually, uh, if you use a spherical module, uh, you, you can avoid uh, tracking, 
but the problem will be that uh, only some part of the module will be operational at a given time, right? So, for example, if I go uh, if I go to the whiteboard, so what will happen? So, what will happen if your module is like this? In the afternoon, you will get the rays like this. Okay, in the in the evening, you will get the rays like this. But what will happen when sun sun is setting in the evening? This part of the module will not be operational, right? So, this will not be active mod part of the module. And because that because of that, you know, there will be loss of power. You, know, you are using a solar cell, but it is not working because light is not falling. Or the worst case is this part, this side of the module, which will not receive any light and therefore, it will not work. So, yes, it is good that you can actually get the radiation all over the day without tracking, but uh, it will be a problem definitely. And to uh, to give an example, there is a company, there was a company called Solyndra. The name comes from the fact that the modules of that company was cylindrical. Okay? But unfortunately, just last month, they have got the bankrupt. Okay? So, the technology actually did not work. So, uh, so, it is not a good idea to have a, not a good idea to have a cylindrical modules. So, one more question. Why is carbon not used as a semiconductor? Why is carbon not used as a semiconductor? Well, uh, 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 carbon, I mean, depending on the arrangement, for example, the carbon is also, you know, uh, tetravalent like silicon. But if you look at, uh, but if you look at the if you look at the band uh, bonding between the carbon to carbon atom, if there is a perfect uh, band, then you will get the diamond structure, right? And you know the diamond structure, you know the diamond very hard uh, non-conducting <coughs> or you can get a graphite structure. If you get the graphite, then it is a very soft material, uh, but it can be conducting. So, depending on the <coughs> depending on the kind of bonding between the carbon, uh, it is difficult to get a material who, which is brittle, which can self strained and which can still be conductive like silicon. So, diamond it can be very hard like a, like a diamond or it can be like a graphite. Okay? And therefore, some people are trying to convert carbon into carbon nanotubes, and people have shown that by controlling the arrange band ar uh, the bond arrangement, one can actually uh, try to get the semiconducting properties from the nanotubes. But uh, it is but uh, carbon it is not easy to make in terms of the wafer and use it as a, as a semiconductor because of the conductivity, brittleness, other factors. Yes, sir. We have one more question. Yeah. Characteristics of the panel. Uh -huh. uh, the input power should be kept constant. Yes. So if uh, the input is changing, then the IV curve that we plot yes. may, may not be all right. So it is uh, better to include an ammeter uh, across the calibrated solar cell and uh, take only those points corresponding to constant value of current uh, which is generated by the solar cell. Am I correct or wrong? Uh, no, Professor Murthy. Uh, you are very much correct that uh, when we are plotting the IV curve during the entire data points that we measure, the input radiation should be constant. Now, because we are plotting uh, and it takes only a couple of minutes to take all the data points. So, it is, uh, it is you know safe to assume that your input radiation is constant, but in a very changing scenario when the light is changing very fast or when the, there is a cloud conditions and all. In that case, uh, you are correct that uh, we should only take the data points where uh, the input uh, intensity is constant. But normally, because we are doing it very fast and 20 data points can be taken in a couple of minutes, uh, it is safe to assume that the intensity is constant. Professor Murthy, go ahead. How the input power can be measured using the calibrated solar cell? Okay, I will explain uh, how, how we do that. So, actually, uh, what we have given the solar the uh, the solar cell has two parameters okay the solar cell uh, current and voltage okay the current of a solar cell is proportional to the input power okay almost linear and this linearity is valid almost from very low power density like uh, let's say about 200 watt per meter square all the way till 1000 watt per meter square Okay. So, basically uh, if I measure the current and this current is a short circuit current, okay. this current is a short circuit current. So, if I basically measure the solar cell short circuit current and if I know 
if I calibrate it that okay, at if I calibrate with respect to pyranometer. So, what we have done is we have taken a pyranometer okay, with the dome, we have measured the solar radio, we have measured the intensity by the pyranometer for a long hours. Okay. So, we started our measurement in the morning until the evening and at the same time we have measured, we have made a table. So, that one column we have the pyranometer reading and other column we have the current of a solar cell, short circuit current ISC. right? So, when we get the large number of data uh, for the pyranometer reading and short circuit current, we can plot it and once we plot it, we will find that they are all comes in a linear fashion. right? So, you can find a slope of this curve, find a slope of this curve and therefore, your, uh, your, uh, uh, reading, your reading will be that, uh, so i equal, to, i is proportional to p in or you can say i is equal to some constant k times p in or we can say your input power is equal to some constant another constant k dash i, right. So, if you know, if you if you know your constant, if you multiply with the current and you, uh, you take your constant multiply with the current, so you can get the input power, right. The advantage of this is that, uh, the good thing about this is that actually if you measure your solar cell in this plane, you are measuring your radiation in this plane. If you are measure your solar cell in this plane, you are measuring your radiation in this plane. So, by changing the angle of the solar cell, you can actually get the solar radiation in that particular plane. Now, this is a approximate way of doing it, but, uh, uh, but it is a very low cost and very simple way of doing it. So, more than 90 percent it is correct. Okay, There may be 5 percent error in doing that, but I think most of the applications uh, like many engineering college, many students training using solar cell as a uh, input power density measurement, input radiation density measurement is a good tool. Uh, now, when we measure power, uh, the uh, the solar cell should be in the same plane as uh, that of the uh, solar panel. Right, right. Baramati, please go ahead. Uh, sorry, uh, my question is regarding efficiency of solar cell. Uh, solar cell efficiency depends on uh, band gap of the material, then absorption coefficient, and. Uh, Actually, sir, in one article, I have go, uh, I have gone through one article. It is also reported that it also depends on the texture and orientation of the film. But orientation one can understand in terms of uh, monocrystalline and polycrystalline. But sir, what about texture of the film? Uh, okay, so madam, uh, I would request you just wait for a couple of lectures when we look at the technology for fabrication of a solar cell. Uh, you will get an idea how does the texture and the orientation and other thing uh, determines the efficiency, but you are very correct there are many parameters which determines the efficiency of the solar cell and once we finish the physics part, we will go to the technology part and there we will discuss how uh, we fabricate and how we actually achieve or uh, try to achieve the higher efficiencies. Constant uh, solar water heater. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, if we want uh, the uh, temperature, that is higher temperature as well as steam, is it possible for the same uh, water heater? A water heater that you get uh, for the domestic application, uh, the temperature that you can you can get is only about uh, 60 to 80 degree centigrade. So basically, with this you cannot get a steam, you know, because there are a lot of losses that occurs. But if you go for the concentrator type of water heater or concentrator type of a, you know collector like a parabolic concentrator, then definitely you can generate steam also. In fact, many power plants uh, which are at the very large scale, megahertz scale, uh, they try to generate steam directly using the concentrator solar power and use it. Okay, there is a question uh, from uh, NIT Calicut, how to measure the diffuse radiation using pyranometer. Okay. Uh, uh, let me explain you how to how to use a measure a diffuse radiation using pyranometer. So once you have this, uh, so this is the sensor of a pyranometer and there are domes. Okay, now this pyranometer actually gets a radiation from all the direction, right? It gets radiation from here, it gets radiation from here, it gets radiation from here, it gets radiation from all the direction. Okay, all the hemisphere. Now you want to only you want to only get the diffuse radiation from your pyranometer. So, what you can do, uh, so what you can do basically if a, if this is your pyran, this is the sensor okay, and this is your pyranometer and if the sun is here, 
Okay, let us say your sun is here. When your sun is here, the direct light is coming from this direction. Okay, this is the direct light which is coming in all other direction you are getting the diffuse light. Right, all other direction you are getting the diffuse light. So, this direction, this direction, this direction you are getting the diffuse light. So, somehow if I can block the direct light, okay, somehow if I can block the direct light, then whatever light that is falling on sensor of the pyranometer will be only the diffuse light. And therefore, uh, one ring is available normally or if you actually some kind of ring is available with the pyranometer and if you block that direct light, then whatever light you are going to get is the only diffuse light. So, in that way, uh, in that way the diffuse light can be used, I am sorry, in that way the pyranometer can be used to measure the uh, diffuse solar radiation also. Okay, Calicut. Now, the efficiency of the solar cell. So, first I have measured I m and V m values, mm -hmm. then uh, I directly calculated solar radiation from using a pyranometer, then mm -hmm. multiplied with the area of the module, can I get the solar uh, electrical mm -hmm. efficiency of the P v module? No, there is one more parameter that you need that is called the fill factor. Yeah, yeah, no, you are correct that if you are using I m, V m, you can also get it. So, let me tell you that here the efficiency will be power output divided by power input, right. Power output is uh, I m times V m, power input is whatever you measure the in watt per meter square and you divide multiply by area. So, if you do that, you can actually get the efficiency. Okay, thank you sir. Over and over. Thank you. Thank you.